Hey guys, Scott McCauley here, president of Autobake Serpentine, and it's time for another Autobake update. Hey guys, so I'm super excited to have one of our top mechanical engineers at Autobake join us today. He actually is over our robotics department. This is Michael Abraham. Hey Michael, how are you doing hey, today? How are you, Scott? I'm fantastic. So, Michael, this is a really cool topic we're talking about today. We had a customer that brought a interesting challenge. It wasn't anything that was wrong with a line or a challenge with an existing line. It's actually a new customer. Uh, that, uh, that has an existing product in the marketplace and they said uh, can you guys do a automatic marbling machine mm -hmm. and uh, so that was the challenge Michael how did we uh, solve that challenge so uh, the main challenge that the customer came up with is that they were initially doing this uh, pound cake product mm -hmm. that's uh, being marbled and they were doing the marbling using a whole lot of people manually using conveyors mm -hmm. and we had uh, we had gone to a site visit to mm -hmm. the customer's site and we have seen a lot of people standing there with right. the marbling sticks and they're doing the marbling manually and uh, a lot of potential for contamination uh, a lot of uh, manual labor being done and uh, the challenge was that whenever we sold them the auto bake line it increased their uh, their throughput dramatically right and there was no way they would be able to keep up with that using manual labor so we had to find a way to do that automatically yeah so tell me, uh, Mike, you and I actually went out there together on one of those trips and uh, kind of paint the picture of what you saw. They, they were using a five pocket loaf pan uh, coming off of a, of a Heinzbach depositor and they had people on both sides of the line and they would kind of reach down and, and tell me kind of the motions that they would use to swirl this product, this so, product. Um, so I would say uh, they would grab like these sticks, like uh, plastic sticks, mm -hmm. and they would, as the product comes in into the cavity, they would just insert it and then start to rotate and twist their arms or twist their wrists and then just lift up mm -hmm. and then do a figure eight, mm -hmm. which is a more complicated motion that you would, uh, you would normally do with any type of machine. It's not just a simple rotary motion mm -hmm. or a simple back and forth motion. It was literally a dexterous right. motion. So what, uh, what we had to do is we had to find a way to automate that uh, instead of having a multitude of people doing it, we had to do it in a compact way to fit in on, on our auto bake line and be able to keep up with the throughput. So this was their number one product and one of the main reasons they came to auto bake. And we had not done marbling in this way before. Uh, were you nervous at all? Well, uh, I, to be honest, I was a little bit. It, it was a new challenge for us. It wasn't something that we've done before. But I was confident that we would be able to figure out a way to do it. And indeed we did. We, uh, we were able to, fit, uh, to design and uh, implement a robotic marbling system that uses two, uh, two compact uh, AVB six-axis robots to do the same motion, but on a uh, much larger scale. Uh, the two robots are equipped with a tool head that has the same, uh, the same size marbling rods, uh, but specifically designed to be uh, metal detectable to work with their uh, product and uh, obviously FDA approved uh, plastic and all stainless steel uh, construction uh, for uh, sanitation and at the same time the two robots can do the same job that would take about 16 people working one shift for six days uh, but do it just with two robots. Wow that's fantastic. So so this customer they had uh, two different products that they swirled or marbled. Uh, one was a uh, a cinnamon style and the other one was raspberry so one's red and one's relatively brown in shade and uh, I think that's one of the main reasons why we ended up going with two robots mm -hmm. um, it gives them some more flexibility mm -hmm. uh, now I will say this um, they actually can run three different product types on this line now because even though so the pans are they're 12 pocket across and there's two rows so 24 loaves per pan uh, on a 1600 millimeter wide line mm -hmm. and with the robots being set up side to side um, we're able to actually program one robot if mm -hmm. we wanted to uh, to actually do a different pattern than the other robot on the other side so the raspberry for instance in this case it's actually the same but in the future if they decide to do a different product pattern then they can actually program one robot to do different than the other and like I said they actually are doing in, in many bake cycles are doing three different products so they'll actually do a swirl product on the far left a swirl product on the far right and then in the middle they'll have a plain product and Mike how do they actually do that well uh, at the moment the two robots can like you said can operate independently and uh, but at the same time the marbling rods that we implemented there are 
fully removable. They can, if they want to, like do a raspberry and a cinnamon and maybe a plain one, they can simply take off the ones that they don't don't need, and it's easy to take off. They just twist them off and then insert uh, insert back uh, insert them back in if they need to go back to the same arrangement that they had before. So they can do three, three uh, and three or two and two, two halves, uh, or just maybe stop one robot and run uh, one half of the pan, a uh, certain product, and the other half, uh, another product. Yeah. So the system offers a, quite a lot of flexibility for the customer to be able to do any arrangement of product they want. So uh, mechanically, were there any challenges during the process that you came across? Yeah, well, initially the, the main uh, thing was to make sure that the system is compact and that the robots are also able to keep up with the system. So we had to evaluate uh, the cycle time, we had to evaluate the size of the robot, we had different options to look at from these very large robots that were able to, to carry a big head to do, the, to do the entire pan at the same time, but at the same time that reduces our flexibility and reduces our ability to make the system compact. So uh, we started out with, uh, with certain designs that we discarded later. Uh, we had the challenge also of the cycle time that we had to evaluate very carefully. Um, because we had to do, like I said, we had to do a certain type of motion to mimic the, what, the, what the laborers were doing. And then we had to also do a figure eight and all that had to happen within like an eight second time. So uh, we had to find robots that would be able to perform that. And also the way the workers were doing it is that they were actually touching the side of the cavity as we were doing the motion. So we had to ensure that the sticks or the marbling rods that we were using uh, are sturdy enough and are able to withstand the constant wear of the of touching the side of the pan because we didn't want to change the 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 profile of the motion. So mechanically, there was a lot of things that we had to take care of to make sure it does the exact same job that a manual worker would be doing. That's a great point, actually. The the robots don't like to touch anything physical yeah. because they like to stop, right? They, they, yeah. they try to detect a crash quickly. So yeah, how do you get around that? You have to touch a physical thing without the robot stopping. Mm -hmm. Well, so that's that's the thing. We had to make sure. Initially, we uh, we thought of using stainless steel rods uh, because, well, they're more sturdy. They're less likely to break. But then you lose the advantage of, of the flexibility in the rod. So if, in case the rod hits it, like you said, the robot doesn't like to to touch anything or collide into anything and they might stop. Uh, so we moved on to uh, using plastic rods which were chosen specifically to be both sturdy and uh, and flexible. Mm -hmm. So in case they touch the side of the pan, they would flex just the right amount so, so that they don't uh, break. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, they are not a wear item. They, and they if they touch the side of the cavity, they don't, uh, they don't cause any scars or scratches to ruin the pan. Uh, what was the plastic material that you chose? Uh, it was acetal, okay. which is uh, very sturdy and at the same time a good wear material. Yeah. So, what color was it? Uh, blue. Yeah. <laughs> well, blue is traditional, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, and I guess it would look nicer than just well, a gray, a yeah. gray uh, yeah. stainless steel. Well, when it comes to uh, blue and plastic, all bakeries now kind of uh, centralize around the idea that uh, the blue is the color that's yep. easiest to visually actually pick out yep. in case you did have a rod that came loose yeah exactly instance, you would, you'd be able to, you'd be able to grab it and, and make sure it doesn't go downstream yep. the packaging and we don't just depend on that obviously the plastic is also metal detectable mm -hmm. so in case a piece of the rod breaks uh, for any reason not only it would be easier to see because it's blue but also any the metal detection machines down the line will be able to detect it so it's completely safe on that regard. Okay, so so mechanically you solved the challenges that we talked about. Now what about in the software, the programming? Um, so the software was actually a big part of, of the challenge there because uh, doing a simple motion on a robot is, is easy but doing such a, a, a more complex motion with all the swirls and the figure eights and uh, like I said, it's not a simple rotary motion uh, you could see that the worker as or the bakery as they're operating, they would lift the product. They would go into the into the product with the stick. They would lift it faster than they would they would go in. So to pull more of the product in, and then they go in and, and do the same motion. And they tilt their hand as they're going up. So it wasn't uh, a fairly straightforward or just a circular motion. It was a specific type of motion that created that swirl pattern that we had to mimic. Uh, so we had to do a lot of uh, a lot of programming runs, changing different parameters, changing the 
radius of the motion, half, half the radius uh, or half the motion down, uh, going down and half the motion going up. We had to change speeds between different portions of the motion. We had to add parameters to twist uh, or to tilt the, the rod as we go forward. And uh, we had to program all, uh, all that in and have it adjustable, parameterized. So in case we need to change that, or actually in case of the customer at some later point wanted to run a different product that would require a slightly different motion profile, we were able to change that fairly quickly. And we're also able to, if we wanted to, we can do the figure eight motion, which the, uh, the customer did, or if they decide a certain product doesn't need it, we can just not, not use it and we can turn it off yeah. fairly flexibly. So in the recipe control now, I, I had a chance to play with it last time I was out there. Uh, we can actually change the number of rotations that we do based mm -hmm. on recipe. We can also then change the number of figure yeah. eight runs that we do within a certain limitation of time. Mm -hmm. uh, and we can even turn that feature completely off mm -hmm. because in this customer specific case, uh, most of the product is sliced and packaged that way. So it's really important that obviously the swirl through the cross section is even. Uh, but then they also sell in whole loaves too. Mm -hmm. And obviously if you're not slicing it and presenting that beautiful interior swirling, mm -hmm. then doing that figure eight is important because then you can look at the top of the loaf and see, oh, that looks interesting, yeah. you know, it's swirled that way. So uh, they want that feature where they can either add that or subtract that depending mm -hmm. on the product that they're actually producing. Yep. So, so bring it all home for us now. Uh, we got it there. How, uh, how long did it take to install? Uh, were there anything that, uh, that came up that, uh, that, that really challenged us in the commissioning of the system? Uh, I would say it, it went out pretty smoothly or pretty quickly because the whole system was assembled or the whole uh, enclosure of the robots and the tooling were uh, pre-assembled. So it just went on the line. Mm -hmm. uh, the programmers uh, fine-tuned the different uh, positions and the different start points and the tracking with the auto bake line. So in terms of that, that went, uh, went fairly smoothly. Uh, the main challenge was once we got to do uh, uh, a dry run or initial run with the product, we had to spend some time fine tuning these parameters, which is good that we made all these parameters uh, actually adjustable in our program. So we'd be able to fine tune them quickly and just adjust it with the customer there on site to be able to give us their feedback and fine tune it with us exactly what, how they want it. Uh, but after that, uh, the system is running. And uh, the main thing here is that it's able to keep up with, with the auto bake line. Mm -hmm. So uh, with a throughput of about 3,200 uh, uh, pieces of product each hour, uh, a, manual, a manual operation using uh, manual labor would not be able to accomplish that. Uh, it's, it's impractical and unfeasible, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, so with, with this uh, marbling system in line, it was actually very key to be able to keep up with the line so they can keep that throughput. Uh, and I, I would say without it, probably the line wouldn't be able to run or produce the product that they needed to. Um, so if we were, this line is capable of 3,200 loaves per hour. Um, a, we, we calculated it. Uh, one of their laborers can do about 200 loaves themselves per hour. So it would require 16 people to mm -hmm. do the load of this line which, like you said, is totally impractical mm -hmm. to get them around an auto bake line, yeah. over an auto bake line, because you certainly can't reach all the way to the middle because it's so wide. It's a wide line too. Uh, yeah. It was essential that this actually worked mm -hmm. for them to be able to produce this product mm -hmm. in our line. And, and that's their number one product. Mm -hmm. So uh, ultimately it was a huge success with a lot of risk behind mm -hmm. it. But uh, you know, we had a lot of, certainly a lot of faith in you, Michael, yeah. and, uh, and you delivered quite well for us. So in dollars and cents then, if they're producing uh, just one shift, one eight hour shift, uh, with 16 people, let's say that the burden labor cost is about $25 in this location. Uh, that's almost $20,000 a week in a six day production cycle, uh, which is nearly a million dollars a year in saving, labor savings. Uh, and this system, I believe, will uh, pay for itself within the first uh, three months, no yep. problem. Mm -hmm. um, so it's quite remarkable. And if they end up adding in their shift and going 16 hours a day, uh, that's $2 million. It's, uh, it's it's a uh, it's a really cool system. And I haven't told you this, Michael, but uh, you need to hear it. There's a one of our partners. Uh, it's, it absolutely, it's not a middle B company, mm -hmm. uh, but they were there installing their piece of equipment over our line. And it's a guy that's actually been in business for uh, over 20 years. Mm -hmm. 
he looked at the uh, system, says it was the most incredible thing he's ever seen oh, in his career. Glad to hear that. Yeah. yeah. So I'll tell you, it's a, it's a big success, and and ultimately the way we uh, the commitment we made to the customer was mm-hmm. that this solution would be able to create an indistinguishable product to what they have in the market mm-hmm. today, and the, and the product accepted that, and that's that's what we delivered. Yeah. And so. It's a compliment to you. Thanks, Michael. Thank you very much. Uh, I look forward to see what you do next. Thank you. And that's it for us today. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Appreciate it.